What's life is in that to be the death of this marriage? The poison of that lies in you to temper. Go you to the prince your brother. Spare not to tell him that he hath wronged his honor in marrying the renowned Claudio, whose estimation do you mightily hold up to a contaminated stale, such a one as hero. What proof shall I make of that? Proof not to misuse the prince, to vex Claudio, to undo Hero, and to kill Leonato. Look you for any other issue? Only to despite them, I will endeavor anything. Go then. Find me a meet time to draw the prince and Claudio alone. Tell them that you know that Hero loves me. Intend a kind of zeal, both to the prince and Claudio, as in, in love of your brother's honor, who hath made this match, and his friend's reputation, who is thus like to be cozened by the semblance of a maid that you have discovered thus. They will scarcely believe this without trial. Offer them instances which shall bear no less likelihood than to see me at her chamber window. Hear me call Margaret hero. Hear Margaret term me. And bring them to see this the very night before the intended marriage, for I shall so fashion the matter that Hero shall be absent. And there shall appear such seeming proof of Hero's disloyalty that jealousy shall be called assurance and all the preparation overthrown. Grow this to an adverse issue it can, I will put it in practice. Be cunning in the working thus, and thy fee is a thousand ducats. Being constant in your accusation, and my cunning shall not shame me. I will presently go learn their day of marriage. I do much wonder that one man, seeing how much another man is a fool when he dedicates his behaviors to love, will, after laughing at such shallow follies in others, become the argument of his own scorn by falling in love. Such a man is Claudio. I have known that there was no music for him but the drum and the fife, and now would he rather hear the tabor and the pipe? I have known that he would walked ten miles a day to see a good armor, and now will he lie ten nights awake carving the fashion of a new doublet? I mean, he, is, he was wont to speak plain and to the purpose, like an honest man and a soldier, and now he has turned orthography. His words are just a very fantastical banquet to so many strange dishes. Now, may I be so converted and see with these eyes? I cannot tell. I, I think not. I will not be sworn, but love may transform me to an oyster, but till he have made an oyster of me, he shall never make me such a fool. One woman is fair, yet I am well. Another is wise, yet I am well. Another is virtuous, yet I am well. Until all graces be in one woman, one woman shall not come in my grace. Rich she shall be, that's certain. Wise or I'll none. Virtuous or I'll never cheat in her. Fair or I'll not look on her. Noble or I'm not for an angel. Of good discourse, an excellent musician, and her hair shall be of what color it please God. The prince, and this your love, I will hide me in the armor. Come, Leonardo. What was that you were saying the other day about how the Lady Beatrice is sick in love with Signor Benedict? Oh, I stuck on, stuck on, Paul says. I did never think that woman would have loved any man. No, nor I either, but most wonderful that she should so dote upon Senior Benedict, whom she hath in all outward appearances seemed ever to abhor. Is it possible? Sits the wind in that corner? Oh, my troth, my lord, I know not what to think of it, but that she, that he, that she loves him with an enraged affection. It is past the infinite of thought. Maybe she doth but counterfeit. Faith, let not. Oh, God, counterfeit. There was never counterfeit of passion that came so near the life of passion as she discovers it. Why, by what effects shows she? Bait the hook well, this fish will bite. What effects, my lord? She will sit you. You heard my daughter tell you how. She did indeed. Indeed, I would have thought her spirits to be invincible against all assaults of affection. I would have sworn it had, especially against Signor Benedict. I should think this is a gull, but the white-haired fellow says it. Nature surely cannot hide itself in such reverence. He hath taken up the infection. Hold it up. 
But had she made her affection known to Signor Benedict? No, I swear she never will. That's her torment. It is true indeed. So she says, John, she says, who have so often and judge a different score and write home that I love him. <laughs> and so, so says she when she's beginning to write to him. And she'll be up twenty times a night, and there she'll sit in her smock until she hath read a sheet of paper. My daughter tells us all. Now you're talking about a sheet of paper. I remember a pretty just your daughter told us of. <laughs> oh, when she had read it and was reading it over, she found Signor Benedict and Beatrice between the sheet. That. <gasps> she tore the letter to a thousand halfpence, railed at herself for being so immodest that she should write to one who she knew would flout her. I measure him, says she, by my own measure, by my own standard. For I should flout him if he writ me. Yea, I love him, but I should. Then down upon her knees she falls, prays, curses, tears her hair, beats her heart. Oh, sweet Benedict, God, give me patience. <laughs> she doth indeed, my daughter tells us all, and her ecstasy has so much overborne her, that my daughter sometimes a fear she'll do a desperate outrage to herself. It is very true. Surely he should know of it by some other, if she will not discover it. To what end? He would only make a sport of it and torment the poor lady worse. And he should, it were almost to hang him. For Beatrice is an excellent, sweet lady, and by all accounts, she is virtuous. And she is exceedingly wise. In everything but in loving Benedict. Oh, I am sorry for her, as I have just caused being humble and her darling. I would that she would have bestowed this dotage on me. I think the here, if you're sure that she will die, she says she will die, if you love her not. And she will die, if she make her love known. And she will die, if you move her, rather than she make one breath of her custom crossness. It were well that she should do so. For, if she should make tender of her love, it is very likely he would scorn it. For, as you all know, the man hath a contemptible spirit. He's a very proper man. He hath indeed a good outward appearance. Before God. And in my mind, very wise. He does show some sparks that are like wit. And I think you about it. As Hector, I assure you, for he deals with quarrels wisely, under, either undertaking them with Christian-like fear, or else avoiding them with great discretion. If he do fear God, as he means necessarily enter peace. If he break the peace, he ought to enter into the world with fear and trembling. And the man doth indeed fear God, however much it may not seem like it by some of the loud jests that he will make. Ah, oh, well, I am sorry for thy cousin. Shall we go to Benedict and tell him of her love? Never tell him, my lord. Let her wear it out with good counsel. Nay, that's impossible. She may very well wear her heart out by then. Ah, oh, well. <laughs> Let it cool. I love Benedict well, and wish he could modestly examine himself to see how unworthy he is of so fine a lady. <laughs> is you brought Grace take a walk? Dinner's ready. Yeah, do not do it upon her this, and never trust my uh, expectation. Now your daughter and her gentleman must the same net spread for Beatrice. The sport will be when each has an opinion of the other's dotage. That's a scene I would like to see, which will be as a, a dumb show. Let us send to call her to dinner. This can be no trick. The comments will sadden the one. They have the truth of this from Hero. They seem to <clears throat> pity the lady. It seems her affections have their full bent. Lovely. <laughs> Why, I must be requited in this. Although I hear why I am censored, they say I will bear myself proudly if I do perceive the love that come from her. They say also that she would rather die than give me a sign of affection. I did never think to marry. Don't, no, I must not seem proud. Happy are they that can hear the detractions and put them to men. They say the lady is fair. Tis a truth that I bear the witness. And virtuous. Is so, I cannot reprove it, and wise, but for loving me it is no great addition to her wit. Nor any great 